For those that have been watching my previous video on the damage assessment of the Lotus Elise, you've seen that the rear drive shaft on the right hand side uh, was severely damaged. Basically the gator was ripped apart because there was a wire, a barbed wire wrapped around the drive shaft. It actually cut both the gator and actually the brake hose. Uh, so today uh, I'm about to replace the drive shaft. Uh, I'm not going to fix it. I bought a new one and I'll show you that in a few minutes. And now replacing uh, the drive shaft isn't all that hard, but I got quite lucky because the clamshell on this car has been removed and if it isn't removed it's a bit more difficult to get to it. But anyhow, uh, the best way is that you place the car on a stand uh, as I've done. The next thing to do is actually uh, pull up the brakes uh, on the, the handbrake on the car uh, so that the, uh, the disc uh, is uh, stable and solid, it doesn't move anywhere because you will have to undo the central nut which is holding the drive shaft in place. Now before you do so you will have to remove uh, what we call a split pin. Um, it's a safety thing and you can knock it out a bit with a hammer but at the end you can actually you know just pull it out and here is the uh, split pin so you can throw that away because that's useless. After that um, it's best to remove actually this uh, nut here. Now I'm going to use a big key for, uh, key for that uh, but you can use whatever you want. Now obviously I have I had it loosened up before uh, so Otherwise, it would take too long for you guys to watch all this, right? Now, the next thing uh, is that you will have to remove a few more things so you can pivot uh, the disc brake forward so you can actually push out the drive shaft. Uh, I found the best way to remove uh, the brakes, the clamp, and then undo the rod here underneath. And that's quite easy. Uh, there's a bolt to be undone right here, which is a 17 and then you just need to undo that one uh, so and of course I cheated a bit on you because I did it before uh, but let me move the camera a bit closer so you, ca you guys can actually see what I'm doing now it's a bit of a, a close-up as you can see the gator um, uh, which is sitting there is completely ripped apart uh, and that's the drive shaft which we will replace. Uh, so we undid the front uh, nut on the drive shaft so now we undo this bolt on the brake which is actually a 17 and, and you know we just take that off. There we go. We then also um, have another uh, inbus key uh, or, or nut which is right underneath there. Yeah so it's right there. That's where it is, right there and where the brake cable is. And you can undo this with a Allen key. The whole clamp will basically come off. I had to undo the clamp because otherwise I couldn't get to this nut here, uh, which then, uh, if I undo this nut right here, then I can lower down this toe uh, rod and, and then I can actually start trying to remove two more bolts, which are one on the top here and one in the back here. But remember, there's a shim in between. So keep an eye on that one that you put it back afterwards. Um, and then actually I can tilt away the whole um, disc. Now I cheated a bit on you guys. I undid did it before so and you may need a little hammer a hammer to knock it out uh, a little bit but knock on the top but here all right there are two more inbus um, key, um, nuts here one over here and one there so I will undo those as well and These things are always hard to get at. It make, makes you wonder why some people, when they're building cars, why they place all these nuts and bolts in such a difficult places. And one more to go in the back. Oops, there goes the shims. Remember when I mentioned that there are shims? I've got one, two, three. So these are the shims uh, and you need to put them back on because otherwise um, the alignment of the car won't be right. 
unless you want to realign the whole car. I think there's even an extra one. Yep. One more. Those are one millimeter shams. There we go. So we got it loose, so now we can actually push back the shaft. So now that everything is a bit loose, we can actually knock back a bit the drive shaft. There we go. So that should be good enough to get it off. Whoops. There we go. So here is the new drive shaft. Um, and we'll put it in as soon as the other one is out. But before doing so, I will drain the uh, gearbox oil with the clean uh, recipient so I can actually put the gearbox oil back in afterwards. And secondly, uh, you will need a special uh, key like this one. Uh, it has square uh, nuts on it and that's what, exactly what you're going to need uh, to undo the bolt uh, on the gearbox to release the oil. At the end, the part which is going inside the gearbox, there's a circlip uh, on, the, uh, on the spine. So this is a detail of the uh, new drive shaft, the part that goes inside the gearbox. And here you have that famous circlip. And uh, that is a circlip that will cause you problems when you're trying to pull out the old one. If you try to remove the old one, don't jerk on it like this because this part will come apart and then you ha really have an issue uh, if you still want to use it. Now in my case it wouldn't really matter because I'm not going to need the old one anymore. Uh, so it's always better uh, if you want to preserve your old uh, drive shaft to put a clamp around this edge to pull it out. Now to get the old one out of the car, um, out of the gearbox, it's a bit tough if you want to preserve it. And that's why I use a clamp like this. And this clamp I will put around it and then I will tighten it up like so until it's real tight. And then I have something to, you know, to pull onto without having to pull really on the drive shaft itself. You can get it in any hardware store and the size is a 8085. Uh, you might do with a 7580 as well, uh, that will just fit I think. And it's easy, all you need to do is undo the bolt, open it up and then tighten down the bolt again once it's around the, the color of the drive shaft, the, the side closest to the gearbox. And then basically uh, you have something uh, with a grip on. We have the uh, clamp in place, so now I will kind of rotate it so I can bolt it down from the top. It's very hard to show you how I actually got it off because you know you need to get under the car and there's no space for the camera. But imagine that this is now the drive shaft. This is the opening where the drive shaft goes in and this goes straight into the camera. The brace was on like that around the color of the drive shaft. And then all I needed to use was a spanner like this one, I placed it on the nut there, which is part of the uh, gearbox itself, and then I could keep bumping on it like this and put pressure on until it came off. So that's basically how I did it. You keep pushing it, give it a, a few bumps, and actually it will come up, uh, off quite easy. Here it is, the old drive shaft and the new drive shaft. The old one still has the brace on it, which I used to push it out of the gearbox. And at the end, uh, outer end of the old uh, drive shaft, that's where you find the completely ripped apart gator. So now I'm gonna put the new one in. And before I do so, I'll put some gearbox oil at the front end here, and then we'll gently squeeze it in, being very careful not to damage the seal um, around uh, the gearbox. Uh, I'm going to make sure that it's absolutely dust free, there's no grit or sand on it because that would be not very good. Um, and then I will actually dip it in the gearbox oil, like so, and we let it drip out because um, that makes, makes it uh, easier to actually push it in. And I also will uh, put some gearbox oil around the oil uh, seal, uh, which is in the gearbox itself. 
we got the drive shaft into the gearbox, so now all that's left is to reassemble the front part again. Uh, I like it always when it's a little bit greased, it's always better for the joints and the seals uh, than having none of them. There we go. So, that should be good enough. So now we'll put it back together. First, I'll put the washer up and the nut. Not too much, just enough. Then we'll do the two top uh, bolts. And I always like to put some DW40 on the thread. So let's see if we can get this in place. All right, so now we do the next one. And we gotta make sure that the shims are in. All right. Okay. So I put the brakes back on and now all I need to do is tie it down and we are kind of finished uh, with the work. The last thing we need to do is to torque down the nut to 45 Newton meter. And once we've done with that, we just need to put the split pen in, clean up the dish, fix the brakes, and, but that's something for tomorrow. All right, we're all done. The new drive shaft is in, so tomorrow uh, I'll carry on with fixing uh, the brake hoses and bleeding the system, and I'll put it up again on YouTube. And keep watching, guys, and thank you for viewing my videos. If you have any comments or recommendations, please let me know, because I'm always learning to oil. And this guy, well, I guess that's garbage. See you.